Welcome to the D&D Fitness Radio Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Don Saladino from New York City and Derek Hansen from Vancouver, Canada. Oh my God, <laughs> look at your background. I just went, we, we just finished a run like... <laughs> 10 minutes ago, like five, and I'm like, get me some water, put a fan beside me. My wife got the fan going and I'm like, this is Tropic Thunder, man. That's unbelievable. I feel well, inadequate. I, I was actually, I, I felt weird wearing the tank top today, but, um, it, you, it know, works. Uh, you know, it, it's like one of those things where, um, you know, we, uh, you know, you think you're going to dress up and, and <laughs> it's like, Never. He's still in this rut of like, what are you, what are you drinking, Kool Aid? I don't know. My wife put something together here, and there's ice in it. It's liquid. I'm good. Oh my god! It's like I remember like podcasts. I remember when I used to do the reps podcast, which I haven't done in ages, but with uh, with muscle and fitness, and you know, muscle got sold, and that's all. That's all a different story. But that was like. <laughs> an actual job <laughs> it's like we used to come like you know you come in you like look presentable we're wearing like tank tops you're in like tropic thunder yeah. headbands i, I like I it better this way i should grab a dumbbell and do a couple of reps you here start at least doing some bicep posing or whatever it is something unbelievable scare off the lions and tigers 100 percent. so i had an idea of a topic today Mm -hmm. maybe we could start it once we i think we agree on it and then we cut all the bullshit in the beginning or maybe we just roll right into it let's just go Whatever. let's just go it doesn't matter so it's, it's freestyling like, yeah but i mean like we're, we're always bringing guests on and we're trying to do things structured but what, what about like training for the aging population well I lot, I mean, I, that's me yeah but I, but I mean think about it i mean well it's me also i mean it's it, but it's all of us yeah everybody yeah everyone well, once aging. you hit 20 it's all just like a death spiral right <laughs> I kind of, you know, it, it, it's funny. I, I remember those days. I remember reading books um, back in college on like Bulgarian training where it would be like, they'd be like, don't warm up. Like go like throw. I remember going to the squat bar and throwing 405 on it. And they just be like, just go to your weight and just hit it. Your body will get conditioned for it. And I just, I remember how strong I actually got from taking that approach. And, you know, now it's, it's, <laughs> it's a 15 minute dynamic warm-up i mean breathing. that all, all that eastern block stuff is kind of scary because you're like oh this is what they did and like well uh did they actually right so well, should, we, should we keep doing it <laughs> yeah because did you ever watch the there were these videos that i bought in like the 90s there are guy i can't i can't remember the guy's name it was something schlosser and it was called iron mind and they would have like training hall tapes from bulgaria mm -hmm. where they would go and video like behind the scenes and they went to China I'm and they showed it. the guys warm up and it was basically snatch with like, you know, 40 kilos then, but then it would, the weight would just double, like they would just do singles and they would just go up, 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 up. So it was really impressive. They did a warm up, but they went up really quick too. So yeah, but it, there is something to be said about that. Like if you just, if you just do something or condition yourself in a certain way, it's just, you know, does that, is that applicable <laughs> for someone in their forties, fifties, sixties? Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I like, Probably not, right, Dave? I mean, it's just, but I, but I do remember, like, if, if you're comparing me now at 43, and I'm, I'm curious to get your opinion, me at 43, I, I feel as in shape, if not more, or maybe stronger, my body composition is better. Like, I actually feel like a better um, version of myself at 43 than I was at 23. Um, but there were some, there are some differences where I was like, I, like, wow, like, I, like, can I do the same weight? Yes, but like my warm ups. Like my, like I am literally like relying upon, and we call it a warm up, call it movement preparatory, call it prehab, pre prehabilitation. I don't give a shit, whatever you want to call it, because everyone's like, well, you should, this isn't a warm up, it's movement prep. Like whatever, just like, I'm getting the body primed, <laughs> just I'm getting it warmed up. Like call it what you want, a workout or training. Like everyone's just so like, everyone's just trying to be so technical. But the one thing that I have noticed is that it, it, it's, you know, I. I I will come in there if I'm, if I have a big pull day or a big squat day, like I'm taking my time to kind of go through it and mm. get conditioned. What about you? I am so lazy that I just start the workout really easy. Like, yeah. so if we go do some runs, tempo runs, like I just do the first set easy and you know, there's almost like, and I don't know if you find this, maybe you have to be a bit older, but there's like this uh, limiter on the body. You know how like they put limiters in cars so that people mm. can't like take them out. Governors. 
Yeah, governors, right? Yeah. And so there's, if uh, like my son will be walking, going for a hike, and then he'll see a rock and it'll be like, I don't know, like 50 inches. He'll jump up onto it. And my brain just goes, nope. No, nope, yeah. you can't do that. Or my daughter will jump down from something and land. And I actually feel pain in my knees when I see that. So there's this weird <laughs> self-governing central governor thing happening oh that doesn't allow me to do stupid shit. It's, um, it's so true. It's so true. Um, my son jumped off the landing of the staircase the other day, which is like, I'm, I'm kind of looking at it right now because I'm not in a podcast room. I'm in my home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven steps to the landing. Seven. It's like, you know, seven. That's a good amount. Yeah. It's a, it's a good amount. Like he literally, like when he comes down, he doesn't hit every step. He jumps off the step. And then when he lands on the floor, he goes into a roll to like absorb it. And I remember watching. Where did he learn that? I don't know. It, oh, okay. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, how do you do that? Like, that's un, like, so now like I'm waking, like the other morning I'm waking up and like, yeah, I just get out of bed. I'm going, I just brush my teeth. I'm going to get like my, I'm going to drink water. It's like the first thing I do after I brush my teeth. And like, I see the steps and I just start running down the stairs. <laughs> my son like motivated me. I was like, I'm just going to run down the stairs and see how my body feels. And I was like, oh, I felt pretty good. Not bad. I you didn't like, jump. <laughs> I, did, I didn't, I don't have a guts to jump yet. You know what the worst movie stunt man thing is, is when a what? guy has to fall down the stairs and you watch and you're like, oh, oh that, that's got to be the worst oh possible God. stunt it's, to do, it, falling it down just, stairs. It just absolutely sucks. But I mean, but, oh, so talking about the warm up, I, I want to get your opinion. Like I know last week we were talking a lot about your running program, but you know, the, the running program is something that, I mean, it, it is so smart, but when I was in you know, when I was 18, I probably would have thought like it was, all right, well, maybe this is a little easy. Like, am I really like, you know, you're not really thinking like 10 meters or like, this isn't enough. It's just the whole thought process. But um, the warm up that you have on there, that's the long form video, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Do you personally always do that warm up? I do. That? I do portions of it. Right. right. Um, <laughs> one because again I'm lazy, but um, it, when people first started doing that full warm up, people are like, "Wow, that was a hell of a workout." That was a lot. Of, that was a lot of work. Yeah, and honestly, when I was a track athlete, um, our general prep phase was a lot of those types of things extended. So we'd start, mm -hmm. "Oh, let's do it for ten minutes," and then, "Okay, let's put do 15, 20. And so it was like a, a general fitness circuit, I guess. Right. And then when you get into shape you tone it down a bit and now it becomes a warm up. So it's just like you create this fitness reserve and then you just do a portion of it. And now you're ready. So I think right. that that's interesting. Whereas people who haven't done it and, 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 and I present that as a warm up, they're like, Holy shit. Like the hype crew always just sends me photos and videos of them just lying on the ground after they've done an, uh, the workout. Right. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess that was, that was quite be, a bit. But it shouldn't be that taxing. Um, maybe they're going a little too hard. I don't know. Maybe some people are like, okay, uh, beat I'm, the hell I'm out of this back on week up. two. I'm back on week two right now, which is like 85%. And yep. I've been, I said I was going to only do two or three days. I've been doing more like minimum four days, um, potentially yeah, and, five days, but it was just beat, beat. Yeah. I, I was playing with it a little bit because, um, I think from all my other lifting and like, like I'm, I'm, I have one hockey game a week and then I, I, I have one like run a week and then I have You're still playing hockey. hockey? They just started back more than oh, like wow. third week back. So like Monday or Tuesday. So like I, I don't know what it was, but like out of the gate, like my my hamstrings were so sore. They were just like and, and what's what's weird is that like when I do hamstrings, they've been getting so sore. Like if I do RDLs, like I'm waking up the next day and I'm like, holy crap, like it, it, an incredible amount of soreness to the point where I'm like, is there something wrong? <laughs> it's like, you know? So yeah, I've been I've been relying on um kind of building up that um that kind of muscular endurance that speed those falling starts the you know the warm-up's helpful sometimes i don't always have time to go through the entire warm-up to where i have to i'll go into those tempo runs like back and forth where like you know mm -hmm. you're just kind of getting the body primed and maybe like the first like set or two of falling starts are, are not at 85 percent. maybe they're at like 70 percent. but then i feel like it just clicks and i start picking up that's when i don't have time when i have time i'm doing the whole thing but i think it really just comes down to that on top of my lifts it's like it, you know and then you're trying to do some stretching like you're turning around at the end of the day it's a lot of work it really is and i love it it just sometimes with work you know you you can't put aside two hours you know you just can't 
Yeah, and I saw some of your runs, and it was you're, they were kind of bang on in terms of the intensity because the first couple of weeks you should be kind of floating them a bit. Like, did you just, see what I posted the other day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So did you see that? That was like easy. That was like yeah, my, that was yeah. last week. That was but, my first week. But what what people don't understand is that like it looks easy, but it's faster than anything you've done. So it's still going to be taxing. And even though you can float it, and you're like, oh, this feels really easy. Your hamstrings are are, are stretching and shortening and stretching and shortening so fast that you're like. Oh, okay. That, I didn't really feel that, but then, yeah, definitely the next day there's going to be a, a cost, right? So, I think people that don't might realize be why, that. that. That that might that might be why the, the the soreness is so high. It's just probably because it's not used to that. Just the rapid stretching, yeah. That rapid stretching, like a little running I've been doing more of the last three four months has been more like five k distance. I've still been doing intervals, but the shortest interval I've done is like twenty seconds, all out. So yeah. 20 seconds all out is that's, that's, that's probably a little more than a hundred meters, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. more than a hundred meters. What two, no, it's not 200 meters, 150 meters, maybe. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I don't know. We're probably around there. Um, yeah. 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 And, and even though you feel like your legs are turning over fast in those efforts, it's still not as fast. It's not it's as not demanding. As yeah. And there's not that acceleration component of, I have to overcome inertia and I've got to build momentum and I've got to get this weight moving. So it's a combination of, you know, the weightlifting on this side and the sprinting and, and just the load plus the velocity is, is a lot. Yeah. You, you can't, you know how they have all this stuff where you can measure bar velocity and all these things like yeah, tendo yeah. units Push and, all, and that. all that stuff. Yeah. 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 It, it, you might get like over a meter per second, a meter and a half per second. Right. But when you're running, if you're running it, say you run it like six, eight meters per second, that's eight times faster. Right. That it's your a good legs point. Are so it's a good it's, point. I wasn't looking at not compare. It's not comparable at all. Oh, yeah. um, I, I, I wasn't looking at it that way. Um, the thing I have noticed is, is, is um, yeah, I mean, when you when you lay it all out on the table like that, you're you're it's it's obvious. It's probably a lot more workload than you're used to in a while. That's if there's anything that I feel differently about my body between now and when I was 20, the old, like the only thing, I mean, yeah, I know I said the warm up, but it's not really entirely true. Like I can, mm -hmm. I can get to a bar and, and, and you know, I, I could pick up 315. I could pick up 405 off the floor without warming up. Like I, I, I could Coach. do that. Um, I don't want to, but I could, it, th there's a little bit more fear now with that. But the one thing where my body has definitely changed a bit is that, that elasticity. Like if I'm going to sprint across the street, it's not as like, boom. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's just because I haven't trained it. Yeah. And, and here's the interesting thing. And I don't know if you ever get a chance to do this, but if you can buy a pair of track spikes, like just a cheap pair, um, mm. you know, off of like East Bay or something like that. And you go to the track and you run like it's a new level. Like you'll feel Why? like I have, it's because one, the shoes are lighter and a little stiffer, but the, the, the spikes grab on. So when you push, you get this instant response, right? So it transfers. Is it better for you? Is it better for your body to do that? Or are you going to get Well, more? it's faster. So you got to be careful. So when I, like I have a pair of track spikes and I'll go to the track with the kids, I'll put them on and it, and I get that sort of like that, 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 that frightening sort of sensation. Cause I'm going faster and it's like, my body's like, Whoa, Whoa. So that's why I get all of my, my pro athletes and all these guys in the off season to wear the track spikes. Cause you can go faster. Now, obviously, when you go faster, there's a risk, but, but certainly if you can train your body so that when your foot hits the ground and you kind of rebound off the ground, it's much sharper, right? right? So if you wore pillows on your feet, you know, you're longer time on the ground. So it shortens your ground contact time. So it speeds everything up. So, and, and I've been encouraging coaches to do that. Go get a pair of track spikes, go run on the track, see how it feels different. And it feels way different. But do they feel, can they, can they, can they see a noticeable improvement where like in, in a month or two, would you think I might regain that elasticity? Do you feel like it's possible for me to do that with the weight training that I'm continuing to always do? Yeah. Yeah. you like, I mean, again, we're not going to turn you into a 20 year old, but certainly you will get a lot of it back. Cause like, again, even in the summer speed program, and I have a training group that I train with a couple of times a week, with kids, and there's some older guys too. And the first week, everybody looked a little sluggish. But then by mm -hmm. week three, everybody's getting into the right positions and look like they're turning over. And everybody's like, wow, I feel better. Like, I want to go right. run a 40 now. And <laughs> I'm like, well, right. we're not quite ready for that. But but yeah, it's it's a use it or lose it proposition, right? And I think a lot of people just don't 
put themselves in that position. Like right now, my, my son just turned 16. So we're te- I'm, I'm going out and teaching him how to drive. Right. And the first day he had no sense of the pedals or the brake. And so we're like, eh, right. Right? Right. and how to turn. But by four days in, four times in, now everything's smooth and it's it's a learning thing. It's, right. a, it's like a motor learning thing. It's, I think it's the same thing if you don't do it for a while. I, I think it's the same thing also. I, I just think people start giving up and they're like, oh, it's just age. It's me. It's me. You know, my body hurts or it hurts when I do this. It never used to. So I don't have to think a little bit differently and I don't have to, you know, I, I mean, I had a guy message me the other day and he was talking to me about back, you know, when he ran a marathon and how at a specific mile he was able to like kick him in the gear and he had this like, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that's gone, but it's just, it's not there right now. <laughs> it's, it, it's, you haven't trained it, you know, yeah. even your, even your mind to be able to kind of get into that. That's what was interesting with, um, talking to, um, Steven from last Steve, week. Yeah. Steve, Steve Magnus. Steve, yeah. I'm posting Steve that. Magnus, which I thought was a great, that was, that was a great, inter- um, a great interview, but I think he was talking about, I was mentioning about the true form, how I used to get on it. And it was like this level of boredom. And then I felt like when I was able to really look at heart rate and I was able to kind of give myself some goals to uh, tackle the t- 30 minutes felt like a warm up. It was like no big deal. Right. And then he said something that was interesting. He's like, yeah, but you're also not training to, you know, handle those distances and that that's why I think m- running so popular because it's so mindless and you can just kind of jump into it and just go and, you know, go to the track and just run 12 times around. And I just got three miles and, you know, I was able to just think and med- it's like almost meditate. It's almost meditative. Right. Yeah, it's if I do a lift or a sprint or do something a little more strength oriented, you know, I'll feel tired after when I run the the hour after I feel like everything's kind of elevated. And it's almost right. like, yeah, there maybe there is some sort of um, meditative response where it just relaxes you. And um, that's the, even though like when I run, it's it's not painful. It's like you said, it's boring and it's monotonous. And I mm-hmm. have to go a special place in my head somewhere to out of body experience but when i finish i'm like wow this is re- that that was worth it so i don't know if it's a circulation thing i don't know if it's an endorphin endorphin thing, thing yeah it's always yeah. worth it though it, it's never not it's never not worth it I, I just i just think with anything as as we're dealing with that aging population you know you said it if you don't lo- use it you lose it. It, it it's just but then getting back into it is almost this yeah, it's a little painful. Like, and just look at it this way: if you if you stop lifting weights or if you stop running for two years and you get back into it, like it's gonna be, there might be a part of you that feels discouraged. Some people are like, "Oh my god, I'm motivated. It feels so great to be back." Other people are like, "Oh my god, I'm so weak. I, you know, I have no endurance. I was out of breath." Like, put some time in, like develop. But that's what's so smart about your program, um, and that's why I'm enjoying it. But I think, you know, the five days a week. Yeah, I, I, normally I'd be like, oh, I have to get five days a weekend. I, I, I'm, you know, if it's four, it's four. If it's five, it's five. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning early and go do it. Um, cause it's I, like, I, cause you I, know what it's like? It's like going to see your therapist, right? It's like, right. I'm sure some people look forward to going and seeing their therapist and getting it off their chest. Those are like the long distance running people. I'm like the person who's like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to go talk to this person, right? And then, right, both people when they're finished are like, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it feels good. I, I, I you know. I, again, I think with a lot of people in fitness, they start wanting to do too much. And they're like, but if I'm, you know, but if I'm doing this and then I'm not focusing on this or I'm doing sprints and I'm not focusing on distance or if I'm doing power, I'm not, I'm not, you know, am I going to get lean doing that? They're just like, they, you know, it becomes a whole mishmash of stuff. And I think that can become a problem also, or maybe, maybe it can't. What's your, what's your opinion on that? What's your opinion on mixing training? I, I, I now, because like, because of the pandemic, I'm allowed to do a lot of different things. So right. I've got, I'm lifting weights with my son. So I'm mm-hmm. doing power cleans and high pulls and all these things, heavy front squats. I'm like, oh, geez, I don't think I can do it. And then I'll go run a 5K with my wife. Then we'll go to the track and sprint. And You're at first I'm like, day. yeah, at first I'm like, what the hell am I doing? And then after a while, I'm like, hey, I can do all this stuff. I can improve in each of those things if I just, plan it and dole it out in the right amounts and all that so i think there there is a bit of an anxiety around if if i uh run if i if i walk too long it's going to affect my deadlift or you know you've heard about the olympic weightlifters who didn't Mm -hmm. even want to walk to go get Mm -hmm. their lunch during a competition right um but i i just think it's that's just an anxiety that's built up you know through stories and i think you can have things coexist um but you know are you willing to do it are you willing to put in the work 
yeah. the planet, right? So like there's a, there's a great study. I have this book. It's an old book, a physiologist book, David Costell. And he was like an aerobic physiologist. So we had all this data on like Frank Shorter, Prefontaine and all that. Mm -hmm. And there's one guy who was a two sub 210 marathoner or something like that. Measured his vertical jump. It was like nine inches, right? And then, and then he quit doing the marathon. He's like, ah, screw this. Like I went to the Olympics or something. And then he didn't train for like four years straight. Didn't train. I think he just did it normal stuff. His vertical jump went up to 21 inches. That's crazy. right. So, I mean, there is a, there is something to it in terms of interfering qualities, but I mean, that guy was probably doing like hundreds of miles a week or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's probably like a very extreme measure. I mean, some of these runners are, I mean, in my eyes, runners are some of the craziest people, some of the craziest athletes as you get into these ultras and these, these high endurance runs. I mean, even these guys who are doing like 26 marathons in 30 days, like this stuff, it's like, it's like, how does your body even handle that? Um, but endurance seems to be the thing that really, as someone ages, it doesn't really affect that much. I mean, I, I, you'll see. I, I don't know if I ever told you this. I, I raced up the Empire State Building three straight, uh, three straight years. How was right? that? How did that feel? Ridiculous. I didn't train for it any, I didn't train for it one year, but one of my clients was like on the board of the New York Roadrunner Association. So he's like, come do it. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm totally into it. What's the, like, check out the world record. The world, world record was some German guy. I think he did it in nine minutes and 30 seconds, which anyone's really? going to listen and be like, 86 flights, nine minutes and 30 seconds. Like, I hear guys like, I do the step mill. I'm like, dude, no. Oh. It's like, it's a, no, 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 no. Like, like, no, this is not happening. Like, yeah. And will, the guys, the guys that win those things are like 120 pounds and are like, they're like 120 pounds. And I, I, I was, I was proud that I actually broke 15 minutes. I did it in like, wow. I, I think I did it in like 14 something or, but it, it, it got a little, into the door like everyone has to run through a door they, i'll never forget this i don't know what year it was but i am wearing a heart rate monitor it might have been the first year because i was like i remember looking at my heart rate monitor before we even started and i was at like 140. <laughs> i was like out of my mind like what am i in for right now my client told me he put me in the pro heat so i'm with these guys that are like professional runners i'm like an amateur i'm like what did you do this? I'm going to totally humiliate myself. And this guy gets up. He has to be, I'm not, I'm not joking, probably 60 years old. And he turns around, he looks at everyone. He goes, now, fellas, <laughs> like he's literally talking like this. Now, fellas, let's take it easy today. You know, like, let's just, let's all take it easy. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, my, my heart rate's at 140 already, which is tough for me to get it to. And I'm, I'm staring at him. I'm like, I'm going to run through this guy. Like, he's going to like, if he's in my way, I'm going to just, cause he's annoying the crap out of me. And I'm, I'm that's why I miss New York city. That's what I miss already. about New York city. <laughs> yeah. The second the gun went off, he was gone. I, 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 I did I, they the, start you the all at the same time? All at the same time, for the 86 flights, I was running up. How I'm literally the... pouring sweat. By the time I got to the top, I'm like, <clears throat> like running through the door. He's sitting there with a cup of juice in his hand, like having a conversation. Like he's not no big deal. Like he beat me by like four minutes. I was like, this is this is all. But but I, but I, I remember I remember afterwards as I was like in a wheelchair going downstairs. I remember literally thinking to myself like, oh my god, this guy's 60. I, I probably ran that race seven years ago i don't know maybe around then i actually found the medals the other day when i was clearing my stuff out of how much did you I weigh kept... how much do i weigh no when you did it how much would you did you weigh like two something i'd probably weigh 215 oh God. my weight hasn't fluctuated i was 215 probably wow i mean i was i was i mean it, it's when you have to be that explosive vertically and your and your foot is not on some revolving wheel and you actually have to it's like doing a plyometric up every step I'm, I'm telling you the first flight you're are you're i don't you're already like oh my god this is real like i'm gonna like i like i was proud of myself i went i i i pushed it you should have wore a gopro i would have loved to seen that <laughs> it was I, you know I, I i that's something i will probably if they ever allowed i would do it probably again? do again one day yeah hands down I mean, but they I were would, doing I, that they do that every year aside from this, every obviously. every year yeah and I, wow. I did three i i did it three straight years and i actually really you know i really enjoyed it but i i, I do remember when i was um each time i would get into a cab or, or an uber afterwards i remember just not being able to stop coughing 
like uh, like literally going <laughs> all the asbestos in the world <laughs> i don't know if it was the asbestos i don't know if it was it was like my oh, oxygen shit. i don't know what was going on i don't know i mean listen you're in the empire state building it's like this this old yeah, um, yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's almost creepy like you're running up this thing especially you know i don't mean to bring it up but after you know after 9 11 like when you're when you're in a you know a, a yeah, place yeah. of that stature, that size, and you're and you're running up these 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 staircases. You're, you know, th thoughts are going through your head, and there's wow. medical on like so as you're like, and there's like a number. There's like this little crappy brown and white number, whatever it is. Like on each floor, it's like thirteen. Next flight, fourteen, <laughs> fifteen. It's like staring at a second hand, and you're just like. 40 and then there's like medical standing there and you see like people in the corner puking and there's like medical oh like, my goodness i mean it's just it's it's it is one of the most I, I think in my eyes it's probably one of the most underrated and vicious events because it's just fast and furious one and done everyone's kind of piling into these staircases and it's aggressive i remember one year some guy started hitting me in my back i'm 215 pounds i outweigh really? everyone by 80 pounds and some guys like boom boom you remember you remember in, in without limits you remember the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of my favorite movies of all time. But do you remember when Billy Crudup, who was playing Pre, I think Gamudi was behind him, or like, or like Vatnin, Viernin, whatever the hell the runner's name is, and the guy starts like, I think it was good. I think it was Gamudi. Gamudi started hitting uh, Pre, yeah. and he was like, he didn't like being, and then he kind of jumped out, and, he, and that's yeah. when he was. They were talking about front running. That's that, that's kind of what I felt like. I was getting hit <laughs> by this guy who was trying to pass me. That's nuts. Like, how wide is the staircase? Like, can you pass people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it, uh, that, that, that's gonna, that's gonna be Why don't you come uh... do it with me? <laughs> Holy shit. We'll bring your son in to kick. We'll actually, we'll bring your wife in to kick everyone's ass. She'll, she'll gonna, be up there having juice with that guy. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're definitely, if we do it, we're definitely filming the whole bloody thing. No, why don't we, you know, you and I should, like, we should, we should, I, I always wondered how I do if I trained. We should train for it. Do they do one for the new trade center? They don't have anything. I don't or, know. And then yeah. right, right after I did it the first year, I became like obsessed. I started looking like, I remember going online and looking like, what? How did you train? Did you train for it after no. that? Like, did you actually no. find? No. no. Okay. No, I didn't train at all. I, I kind of used it as like a gauge. I was almost like, well, can I just beat it from year to year? And I think every wow. year I got faster. I think I also knew like my expectation. The first year out of the gate, I was like, boom. And I remember by the first flight, I was like, okay, we have to shift from six to three right now, like the sixth gear to third gear. But um, every year I got, I, I got a little bit faster. And I do remember I, I did break 15 minutes. I, I, it was 14, 20, wow. 14. So I was like, which I don't think is like anything exceptional, but like, I was like, okay, that's not bad. You know, the world record got eight. I mean, 930. I mean, that's just 930. That's, that's insane. And there's wow. no and there's no correlation between the step mill. I don't care what. It well, is. and that's, I mean, think how long you got to wait for a bloody elevator. So. Uh, well, you know, going for... down is the worst part because when you're at the top, now you've got everyone who's coughing, sweating, piling into an elevator, and everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> like coughing on your neck, and you're standing in this elevator like it's COVID hell. Crap. <laughs> and you got to go from like the 86th floor to like another lane, or or maybe we finished higher than that, and we had to go down to a landing area. So you, you don't take one elevator down; you have oh, to take like two of. It, it's it's flames, man. I'm, it's, I'm, I think I'm semi claustrophobic too, so that would kill me. Actually, if they ever reopen, if they ever reopen that, you you are definitely doing this. For me. If I do it again, if I do it again, we're gonna do a. Uh, we're, we're not going in the freaking no, pro section. D &D. We're gonna do a D and D. We're gonna yeah, do a D and D episode. If, can we there. tether each other like in handcuffs or something? You 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 drag me up there. We're gonna have GoPros on. We're gonna be whispering to each other like, oh yeah, shitting my yeah. pants right now. <laughs> some go. some guys hitting me from behind. Well, just slug them. <laughs> just hit them. Oh my god, yeah, I remember I was so upset. But so my point of my <laughs> rant, the point of my 10 minute rant there was I remember as frustrated and annoyed I was about this guy who beat me by four or five minutes and was basically, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? He was basically making fun of everyone. Just well, that's <laughs> what I, if, to... if I do it with you, I'm going to be that guy and write, okay, everyone just chill. <laughs> Let's take it easy. <laughs> Let's take it easy. And then they can blow Let's by nothing... me. Yeah. <laughs> what if I was up there like, you know, last year I weighed by, by 80 pounds. Last year, some guy, like, we don't want to have, what happened last year is not going to happen again. I'm not going to hit anyone for passing me. <laughs> so you start putting things in people's heads. <laughs> I've, I've been in anger management. My anger management classes have really helped. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so my point of my 10 minute rant there was in, endurance seems to be that one area that, 
can continue to improve. <laughs> right? I hope so. I hope so. Well, I, I, uh, I haven't seen that. I mean, I think what ends up were, happening, Okay. Were what? you sore the next few days? Like how, like, cause okay, no. if I fly to New York and do this, I want to stay there for another five days so I can recover too. Right. So well, we're going to go, I mean, right after that, it's like in the shower and right to literally to some good Italian restaurant. We can just <laughs> eat pasta and just get hammered and just drink away like your uh, sorrows and pain. I, was I, was I sore? No. I mean, I, I rarely get sore from like anything, you know, like any type of activity like that, even, even hockey. I mean, I didn't play hockey for six months. I came back. I went out, I skated hard. Like my hip flexors were a little sore. That was it. Like nothing really gets sore off me for some reason. RDLs right now have absolutely wrecking my hamstrings. <laughs> and I think it's cause of your sprint program, but you know, I think you have a good explanation on that. Like that turnover is so much faster. <clears throat> yeah. It's a specificity issue. It's different. It's just so, but it's still, it's probably more stressful, but now, your hamstrings don't want to lengthen slowly, right? So now there's a sort of, you're kind of confusing them a bit in terms of uh, the, the rate of stretch and tension. I'm figuring that'll pass in probably week eight. <laughs> it's probably going to be like week, week seven or eight. That's going to be my body. will be like, all right, I'm yeah, you're, you're three to four, it. give it three to four weeks, but yeah. All right. But yeah, the, the aging thing is, um, is interesting because you're always wondering like, you know, you look at you look at the calendar and you're like, well, am I too old to be pushing in this particular activity, right? Can I lift weights and can I do this and can I do that? And and most of the time you can do it. You know, you obviously have to be careful with the volume, but mm. but I think you can. Um, you know, so I but but like you said, I see a lot of people doing just one thing. Like I'm gonna be a marathoner. <clears throat> right. Um or I'm just going to be a power lifter. I know some guys who just lift all the time and they're in their fifties and sixties. And right. of course, a lot of those guys will need like knee or hip replacements because they're almost focusing too much on one thing. It's that right. overuse issue. Um, yeah, no, I, I actually agree with that. I, I think the biggest mistake that, that a lot of people are making out there is that they're just, as, as they get older, they're, they're doing too much volume, which is, I, I think it's basically what, like what I'm going through right, right now. I mean, my, my biggest issue is just, you know, again, throwing a little too many ingredients into the blender, you, you know, like you gotta, which is why, like I very well could do five days a week at this program. Like, like I'm trying to like one like a day here, like am I better off like continuing to do it? Probably. Am I better off taking the day off? I think you have to kind of look at <laughs> how are you feeling physically, emotionally? How are you, how are you sleeping? There's all these other factors, but I, I do notice that most people are just, you know, they just are always relating, like getting crushed with, a good result and that's what's refreshing about what you put on paper is that it, it, it really is like you know you're not i mean 80 85 percent is a nice place to live especially in the beginning i'm not saying that you don't have to overreach and and you, and you should but in the beginning you know you're at 85 percent. that's not a it's not a big deal yeah I, I, and i i'm i'm thinking that's an issue with a lot of people entering any fitness program is like okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit it hard. And I think there's got to be this period of this sort of grace period where like, okay, just go easy for the first couple of weeks. And, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry for a lot of these programs. And even some of these group fitness things that, that I've seen in New York city with you where you're like, well, you know, do the, do you just jump in with everybody else or do you have a special sort of graded program for people who are new adopters and, um, I think it would be a lot better if, if you gave people that two or three weeks of that anatomical adaptation. Yeah. 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 No, I, I definitely talk more about consistency over intensity. I'm not saying that, like I say, I, like we have to overreach. I think it's, we don't have to, I mean, it's, I think it's important if you want to improve, but like I've got friends of mine that live in 80% all the time and they're in, they're in, they're in great shape and their bodies feel awesome. It's like, I think you got to ask yourself sometimes, I think we start looking at the research too much and we're always trying to figure out how to be optimal and, but we're doing so many things in our life that are contradicting ourselves from being optimal. Right. It's like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to crazy intensity, but you know, I'm not doing that. I, I don't know. I just think people kind of become all over the place. And, um, you know, I, I think that becomes difficult and confusing as well. But, um, I think the main thing that I'm noticing from people is just, uh, you know, as, as they're aging, the volume's just way too high. And, um, they're always under this assumption that they have to go like, with their foot to the floor and 
you know, even even in the beginning. I mean, if you're, I mean, D, it's physically impossible. I mean, I think it's the main takeaway. I mean, one of the takeaways I want people to listen to today is it's, it's physically like we're not always going to improve. Like we can't, it's like, you could be on the best program and you could be ramping up and then, and then what, like what happens after 12 weeks? Like what if you start feeling crappy, what do you got to keep going at that level? Or do you have to maybe downshift a little bit and just allow the body to recover? And, you know, I mean, I know for me, you know, personally, like I, I've, I've made some big decisions in my life over the last, you know, few months. You know, I've had a club in New York City for 15 years. Like I, like I, I, I love that place. But I'm, I'm very, I'm very comfortable with the fact that I'm moving on from it right now. But I'm not going to say it's not stressful. Like I was, last week, I was worried about my head cleaning guy getting a job. You know, I'm worried about my coaches. I'm, you know, worried about my manager. Like where is she, like she's fortunately able to still work for us. Like. I, yeah, I'm worrying about the, the equipment pickup, you know, I'm worried about my landlord and this, in the, in the space and the condition I have to leave the space, you know, there's, there's all these things I'm worried about my members, you know, I'm, I'm worried about, you know, I've been talking to them. It's like, now you start adding this additional stress to your week and where your body might be feeling incredible suddenly starts dealing with something that's pretty dominant and you better make sure that you're adjusting everything else in your life. Cause you'll walk around, you'll start feeling like shit. And then you'll start saying to yourself, well, wow, why am I, why am I having a bad week of training? Like people, you, you know, why, why are you having a bad week of training? Cause what you just, what I just said is a pretty major factor of your life. That's a pretty big deal. Like you have to just accept it and downshift and maybe get your reps up a little bit and stop getting under heavier loads. And you know, maybe it's just going in there, playing some music and relaxing and checking some emails in between sets and not being so critical on yourself. Maybe, maybe the answer is that simple. Yeah, I think, you know, all the stuff you identified with the, the, the stressors, the external stressors, I think a lot of people don't account for that. And it's just very, it, it's very sinister. It kind of just sneaks in and you don't notice it until it's too late. Um, and, and I think giving yourself a break during those times, I mean, nobody should stop exercising altogether, but just adjusting the volume to address it. Like my wife, um, she noticed her resting heart rate, um, her average had gone up usually she's in the four, like mid forties, high forties. And it went up into the fifties and close to 60. And we're like, Hmm, I wonder what, That's and then she's, you know, she's worried about the kids going back to school. She's a teacher. She's going back to school. That's right. So deal. yeah. And, and you don't really think of it. We hadn't changed anything, but that, that was an interesting indicator for us. Yeah, no, I, I, I had um, a woman reach out to me for one of my challenges just the other day. And she said, um, you know, my, my eating's the same and um, I don't understand. I'm just tired this week. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just tired, but I haven't changed my training and I haven't changed, and I haven't changed. Oh no, I'm, I'm sorry. That's false. I haven't changed my eating. And I'm like, yeah, but you just got on a new workout program. Like you just started, like this is day five of, of our new mm -hmm. challenge. Like you, that's changing up a, the stressor in your life. You could just, some people are messaging me like I'm overwhelmed by, you know, by the program. It, it's, we, we absorb information differently. Someone might look at what I'm giving and be like, oh my God, this is so easy, so user-friendly. And someone else might be like, oh my God, there's a lot of stuff here. I am stressed. And that right there is going to affect your recovery and your sleep and your mood. Now look at the time of year. I always call this time of year like the second new year. You know, it, it, it's, it's always something like people know we never got it. I'm like, no, this is our second new year. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, this is Labor Day. Like everyone... August, I mean, put aside what's going on in the last six months, but right after Labor Day, kids are back to school. Summer partying's kind of over. The work schedule starts picking up. Most people I know start taking a few weeks off in August. Like it becomes a little bit of vacation time, work schedules, casual Fridays, things start, you know, coming into effect. And the second New Year starts after Labor Day because we have a sprint now till Thanksgiving. There's really no holiday parties. There's really no corporate events. It's back to work. And it's a great opportunity. I tell people, I said, listen, holidays are, you know, if, if you're someone who struggles with work, with business to entertain, um, let's get you to Thanksgiving, like clean. Like, <laughs> like I've turned to clients in the past, like, can we make Thanksgiving with no booze? You know, ones that really are kind of fighting it. And they're like, yeah, let's, let's give it a shot. And they'll, and they'll give it a shot. And the next thing you know, three months of that, 
man, then they go into Thanksgiving and they have a good time and they're like, all right, I'm going to try and make it to the holidays now and I'm going to be good. And then a couple of holiday parties and the next thing you know, they're getting through the new year and it's not a complete disaster where, you know, and it happens. You know, that people will be good at Thanksgiving and then the holidays and Christmas and, and, and the new years. And it's like, oh, I'll just start January 1. This is the second new year. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Um, do you think now this is this is an interesting question I've been thinking about just general health care that people have been motivated to get into a good fitness program and obviously the eating and all that because of, you know, what we've been finding out with the COVID and even what, you know, I saw they're talking about Dwayne Johnson and his family um, and, you know, he went through it, but because he was in such good shape, like it was a pretty mild case compared right. to maybe what other people and I, I don't know how old he is now, but Right. You know, he's in, probably in his fifties, right? Um, um, God, you know, and I, and I actually know him um, <laughs> and, I, and I, and I should know how old he is. Um, you know, I, I saw him in Atlanta. I was talking to him in Atlanta um, before the pandemic. Yeah. Probably a few weeks before he, he looks amazing. I mean, I mean, the guys in, you know, I mean, he's, he is the rock. I mean, he's like, his body's incredible. I'm trying to think how, how old's DJ? Do, do you, do you know? I was going to tell her to look, look that up. She seems <laughs> deep in work right now, so I'm not going to ask her to. Um, how old is Dwayne? <laughs> how old is Dwayne? So, yeah, to answer your... How, how old? 48? 48. He's 48. Okay. He's okay. younger than you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got I got some work to do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, but to answer your question, you know, you, you saw people put on the freshman 15 through COVID. I mean, you, you, you did see people struggle with it. And I can understand the first month, I mean, the, the first month of it, like my wife and I were at home and we were like, being cook, perfect. cook, yeah, being perfect, exactly. You're cooking and like, you know, there were definitely more, more desserts flowing and there were definitely a little bit more, like I'm not a big drinker. There was definitely more alcohol flowing around. And we just kind of like, and during that period of time, I, I I don't want to say give up, but we just kind of relaxed and we weren't definitely as dialed in with our nutrition. Now everything's, I think, back to normal. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's where most people, from my challenges and, and, and when I'm talking to people, I, I think a lot of them, because of the stress, are having a difficult time allowing things to click. But I'm seeing it improve every month. So that's that's the sharing also. Yeah, yeah, I, I think there is. What about with you? An adjustment. Well, I mean, for me, <laughs> it's been good because uh, I don't have to travel. I don't have to uh, work as physically hard so I can devote that to workouts and, and everybody in our family has been doing very well. So um, we've, we've kind of used this opportunity to improve. And like you, like I, we talked about, I'm probably in better shape in the last, in the last six months, I'm in better shape than I have been in the last six years because of nice. it. So how's your body feel? pretty good like better. that's that's the one thing even when i was in my 20s uh you could say you were in better shape but i was always like knees back just from training so hard like um you know when i was competing in athletics um i was i always had something right you know i could always feel like tendons ligaments whatever so at the very least now um i may not be as fast or as strong but general wellness is pretty good right Right. You know, so something to be said for that. Well, that's a good takeaway. I mean, I, I think you're, I think you've been always good at that. Um, not, I'm not going to say always, maybe not when you were 20, but I think since I've known you, I think just listening to your body and going in there and, you know, being consistent, but you, you know, you joke around and you say lazy, you're like, I'm lazy. I'm like, no, you're not lazy. Cause you obviously do more work than, you know, most other guys, your, your, your age. I, I think you just, I think you just have a relaxed personality about it and you're not like putting a ton of pressure on yourself with it and you're getting in and you're doing the work. And you know, if you, if you set a PR great, and if you don't, and you go in that day, you're not beating yourself up over it. I, I know friends of mine who have, they'll have one of my buddies the other day said he had a bad deadlifting session in the morning. So it drove him nuts and he went back in the evening. <laughs> oh, like, you're already, I mean, he's also an absolute machine and he's not, he's not a normal human being, <clears throat> but, um, you know, that's, I, I think for him, it's more mental than anything. I mean, is that, does he need it physically? I don't think so. Like, but I think, it, I think this stuff becomes more mental. Like, why would I do too much 
when I know, like I, I, if I could train more and more and more and more, I would. I'm not one of these people who are like, oh, well, let me do the minimalistic approach because I'm going to just, I'll, I'll improve and I'll get by on that. I feel great training, so I love to train and I love my training to be dynamic and do different stuff. All that keeps me back from being able to do uh, more is how my body's recovering and feeling. That's it. Yeah, and I, I, I think, if you can get into that groove and I, I know a lot of people who just, who are like my age and they play sports mm. for their fitness, which I think is not necessarily a good thing because you're, you can't control what happens in sports if that's all you do. Right. So it's fine if you're doing your lifting and your cardio and all that, and you go play sports, you're prepared. But I think there's a lot of people who are like, Oh, I'm going to go out and yeah, play whatever. soccer. I'm going to play yeah, soccer. Yeah. yeah. I played in college. Guy like really tears his that. ACL, blows his yeah. Achilles. Yeah, I mean, but that, but again, that's coming down to like they. I, I don't believe they've they've earned the right to be back in no. there doing that. That's that marathon runner that I was talking about. Yeah, like just take it easy. Like go in there with sixty percent. Just just move. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, fit fitness is not sport. <laughs> it's different, right? So, but yeah, I'm I'm very intrigued with the uh, the Empire State Building uh, stair sprint or whatever well maybe well maybe when all this crap lifts off when, when all this lifts off one day i am going to do that again um as long as we feel safe and yeah yeah we're back to you know, we can wear our to, altitude masks yeah hopefully Joe, could you imagine i wonder how that would feel i wonder if i'd be better off maybe i'm not breathing in bad air <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unbelievable um all right well i i think for everyone listening out there for those of you who are aging which is everyone <laughs> everyone I know that for a fact. It's Everyone inevitable. Aging. Yeah, it's inevitable. But I, I think what happens is, is we, I think Derek, you and I kind of summed it up. A quick recap on that is if you don't use it, you lose it. And if you want to get back into activity, you better take your time doing it. But I believe and you believe that we can find it again to, to, to some extent. Yeah. And, and, and like you said, for a lot of people, it's, it's a mental challenge. It's, it's the patience, it's the consistency. And I think you almost have to enter sort of like a Zen like state where you're like, okay, this is, this is a lifestyle and right. this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, and then within a month or so or two months or three months, you'll see a significant change. You're like, okay, great. But um, unfortunately a lot of the marketing around this stuff is, Hey, do this and you'll get better. And people think, oh, great. It's going to happen right away. It doesn't always work that way. And, and, uh, and unfortunately, you know, something as brilliant as your program, if you handed it to someone who is in general fitness and they don't have proper guidance, they're going to assume, well, this isn't a lot. Like this is, and, and, and they don't realize, um, you know, I, I think group fitness I got to watch what I say here, but I, you know, I think, <laughs> I, I think group fitness, I mean, I, I have two different thought processes on it because group fitness, if it removes someone from the couch, you know, I think we're doing a good thing there, right? If someone's, you know, sedentary and, and they, and they never had the ability to go in and do that. And now they're around people and there's a community and camaraderie. I think that's all good. But I also see that, that specific volume with the majority, the majority, not, not all of them. Cause I've gone to some good, I went to mile high run club and I actually really enjoyed it. The, um, this was before, um, COVID and the instructor was a professional, I think one miler, like she would run the one mile, but she was like a pro and she came in and she put us through like really awesome, fun, smart intervals where, you know, like right before you're doing, she prepared you beforehand. This is how many intervals that we're hitting. This is what we're doing. This is the warm up. The entire work class is going to be like 35 minutes. And I enjoyed it. I would do it every week, but I think that's the rarity. I feel like a lot of times it's, it's, you have cheerleaders up there and it's, let's turn the heat up. Let's turn the volume up. Let's shut the lights down and let's just go and sweat. And I understand there is a benefit to that, but not at the cost of someone getting hurt and not at the cost of someone getting in, in more shape. And, and, and that's something that we don't talk enough about. You go into these classes, a 40 on 10 off is not a hit class. It's not a hit class. Like you're going to get slow in time. You're going to get weak in time. It does not mean your body composition is going to improve. Almost any of those classes I've ever walked into to check out for, for obviously research purposes, because I don't really, you know, enjoy classes like that. They, they never like, no one in there looks like that they're in shape. I'm sorry to say that, but it's the truth. And I, and I think if you're going in and, and, and you're consistently doing something over and over, 
and you're not improving, then you really have to assess what it is that you're, that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Cause there's some Simple. smart coaches out there that can deliver some information. I think you gotta, I think the person listening to, to this right now is let go and trust the coach. Like when you're grabbing Derek's program and it says five times 10 meters and then take a two minute break, take a two minute break. Like you, you may not think you don't, maybe you think you don't need it. You need it. Take a two minute break because we want you to repeat at that intensity, at that awareness. Like, I, oh, I'm not that tired. Well, you know what? You're, you're not driving your knees in the position you need to. You're reaching. You're, you're just not focused because you're too exhausted. It's like someone doing a box jump for, for time and the next thing you know, they're sloppy and their knees are, are collapsing. It's like, it's crap. It's, you know, the, someone reached out the other day, 30 seconds, do I have to take that much time? I'm like 30 seconds isn't a lot of time. Like maybe you're not going hard enough. So I, I think that's something I, I'd like people to take away from this today also. Yeah, no, it was a good discussion. I, uh, it's got me motivated. I, I did a run and now I'm going to do something else. <laughs> Let's do another workout one of these days. Even if we're not videoing it, we should do it. That was fun last time. We'll do some, we'll do some intervals or something. I'll yeah, I got it. Uh, uh, we might take a couple of weeks because we still have all the stuff moved out of some of the rooms we're renovating. So I put stuff on, piled stuff on the oh, treadmill. God. Oh my God. It's like, a, so it's a disaster. The it's the clothes hanger right now. Yeah, so unfortunately. Well, congrats so. on that. We're actually, I think, starting a little work this fall, hopefully. So good time to do it. But all right, listen, I'll touch base with you this week. And okay. um, that was a good topic today. Yep. I like that.